Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Megan Hayes Golding. I use pronouns like she, her, and hers, and I teach here at Deerfield Academy in Deerfield, Massachusetts. And welcome to Summer Seminar. Tonight's topic is all about time. Uh, the actual title is A Matter of Time, Planning Synchronous and Asynchronous Activities Online. Um, with us tonight is Kim Banyan, uh, who teaches at Global Online Academy and at Pembroke Hill High School in, is it Kansas City? That's right. Kansas City, Missouri, yes? Yes, Missouri yes. song. Yes, excellent. All right, great. So I'm so glad that all of you are here tonight and I'm really excited to hear what Kim has to share with us. We're gonna use a good chunk of tonight's period, uh, tonight's time, uh, I meant that pun, um, to, to actually work on and think about our own lessons in our classroom. And I wanna give you a little bit of, um, a little bit of a spoiler for for some future work is uh, be thinking about a lesson in your class that currently is exclusively synchronous. Kim's going to challenge us to think of ways that we might make it more asynchronous or make it an asynchronous lesson. Um, and along the way, we're going to look at why you might want to think about asynchronous lessons and some, some planning frameworks, some ways to think about it. But as always at Summer Seminar, we spend a lot of our time in small group conversations. So to help facilitate that, it is helpful if I group you roughly by type of subject taught. Here in Zoom, you can change your name and I want you to prefix your name um, with a letter, either H for humanities or S for STEM. And if you're outside of those, please feel free to just write out. And I'm gonna show you, if you're not sure how to do that, I always go to the participants tab, click more, Hang on, mine's blinking a lot. Click more, choose rename. And I'm gonna, I'm a STEM teacher, so I'm gonna put an S before my name. The reason why this is helpful is when I go to make breakout rooms, you'll sort alphabetically. So all the STEM teachers will be together and I'll make breakout rooms that are STEM teachers. And I'll make breakout rooms that are humanities teachers. Excellent, I see lots of people renaming. Does anybody need to hear again how to rename themselves? Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna be irritating. Excellent, please do. So click on the participants tab down at the bottom of the screen. Now it opens up a little area on the right side of your screen. Hover over you, you'll get a blue button that says more. Yep. Choose rename. And I see Jimmy in the chat. Jimmy, did that work for you? Yeah, is S math? S for STEM, yeah. STEM, nice. You've done it right, Jimmy. Thank I you. I went with M for math. I'll figure it out after that. Um, yeah. Excellent. It'll alphabetize anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to hand it off to Kim, and um, I'm going to mute myself. I guess one note before I do that. I forgot about this piece. My job tonight is to manage the chat window, pass along questions, um, as is relevant, and um, mainly keep y'all all in line so so we can hear some great stuff from Kim. Great, uh, thank you so much, yours. Megan. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here. I'm excited to be here tonight to talk about teaching online and really get us together to talk about some practical ways we can um, think about the online assignments that we provide for our students and why we provide them either synchronously or asynchronously. So I'm going to take a second here and share my screen. Hopefully that all comes through. Um, you will get a copy of this in the chat window, I believe, before we break out um, into sessions. So you can have um, some of this information along with you as uh, you're discussing in your small groups. So today we're talking about um, the matter of time and thinking about synchronous versus asynchronous activity. So here's a little lay of the land, um, what we'll be doing for those of you that like to know where we're headed. Um, we're going to take some time at the top of the hour just thinking about and reflecting on the relationship between time and teaching. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about some best practices around synchronous versus asynchronous communication and um, look at an example from one of my classes and think about um, what works as a synchronous or an asynchronous assignment and why. Um, then we'll do our breakout groups and we'll brainstorm together some of our brick and mortar assignments and think about how would we transform this assignment and um, what, what might we do with it. And then um, 
as we come back together, we'll think a little bit more about how issues of uh, diversity and inclusion and equity tie into online learning, maybe um, how that might uh, impact the way we make our choices for online learning, and also think about our own time as teachers and how we can make online learning more fluid, um, encourage respect for our own time, because we all know time management shifted a lot when we changed to online teaching in the spring. And we'll do a little bit more brainstorming on that before uh, we have some final thoughts. So um, that's the plan for tonight. Um, but I wanted to start with some reflection. So we're going to take two minutes to think about this question. How does time drive the pedagogical choices you make in your brick and mortar classroom? So when we think about something being a 50 minute class period or a 90 minute class period, when we think about, oh, we only have 10 minutes left, or it's going to be the weekend and I won't see my students again until Monday, right? Um, just brainstorm for a while. What are some of the ways time derives our pedagogical choices? Now, I would have a big H in front of my name, so I have pen and paper and I'm going to be jotting down my ideas. Um, feel free to open up a Google Doc, open up your notes app on your phone, or just think in your head, whatever you're most comfortable with. We'll just take two minutes to jot down the, our ideas on this. How does time drive our pedagogical choices in our brick and mortar classrooms? Okay, two minutes, everybody. You could come to a stopping point in about 15 seconds. Thanks everyone. Um, so this was our first little uh, reflection piece. Now I want us to think about another question. Another two minutes. How has your concept of time changed with this pandemic? So this might be a little more personal, doesn't have to be necessarily related just to your teaching. How has your concept of time changed with this pandemic? And let's take another two minutes to jot down ideas, reflections, um, where we're at with this.
Okay, try to come to a stopping point in 15 seconds or so. Finish that last thought, whether it's mental or on paper or typed. Um, what I'd like for us to do, um, those who feel comfortable doing so, uh, could you distill what you had to say in maybe some adjectives or a phrase about that idea of how has the concept of time changed for you with this pandemic? And could you please share that in the chat window? Let's take just a couple minutes to share out some of our distilled responses, a phrase, some adjectives. Mm, fluid, elastic, flexible. Mm -hmm. mm. Nebulous. <laughs> Precious, yes, uh-huh. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of comments that have more to do with sort of the concept of time and some with how we feel, <laughs> just the emotional reaction to time, like roller coaster. <laughs> Mm. Interesting insight into assessment there, Elizabeth. Very cool. Thank you for those of you that felt comfortable sharing some of your responses. I think it's interesting to see what are some of the most common ones and uh, how we're reacting to uh, time in this pandemic. Now, obviously, we're stopping to reflect on these two questions for a reason. We're all teachers here. We've all figured this out. And so if our concept of time has changed, then that also means our pedagogical choices have to change. Um, when we're living in an environment where there really is no more classwork versus homework, there's only learning. Now, all of a sudden, how we deal with time in our classroom is just different. And acknowledging that seems to be one important step to figuring out how to make this online teaching work. Um, so, some of you, like me perhaps, were stuck at home with a young child who watched way too much television. Um, and so as I was prepping for this uh, discussion tonight, I kind of had this brainstorm. There's been two movies my son has been obsessed with, Back to the Future and Into the Spider-Verse. And so um, I really started thinking about how these really are metaphorical for two different ways of thinking about time. Um, Back to the Future being very much based on this synchronous idea of time. You even see Marty McFly looking at his watch on the poster, right? We have to be somewhere at a certain time. We need to sync up for things to go right. Um, Into the Spider-Verse, if you haven't seen that Spider-Man movie, it's excellent. Teaches much better values than the 1980s film, I I'll tell you that. Um, but the idea being that this is kind of an asynchronous model. They're all living in separate universes, but they're all Spider-Man and they're all trying to meet the same objective. They don't have to do it in the same way on the same time. Um, you can accomplish the same goal, even if you're doing it in disparate ways. So this is kind of my running metaphor as I was thinking about this um, approach tonight. So I broke down just some general principles of what are some of the best practices surrounding why we decide to make an assignment synchronous as opposed to asynchronous. So the first one is connecting with students. So in synchronous assignments, right, um, we are doing things like check-ins. Um, we are making sure that um, students are um, meeting with us face-to-face, eye-to-eye, and getting the information that we need. We're making sure that there's small group, one-on-one -on -one communication, um, and that students can talk with us and um, we have that ability to connect with them. We're giving them one-on-one -on -one feedback. Um, we're doing group work sessions. We're doing conferences. All of those things in which we can really privilege connection between teachers and students. In terms of content delivery, in terms of delivering, say, lectures or things like that, that's not really recommended in terms of building that connection. So when I think of synchronous, I think of like Doc Brown, right? Um, it's crucial that we connect at the exact same time to communicate a really time-specific message. That's how synchronous um, connection works. 
when I think about asynchronous, then I think about this works really well for content delivery um, in terms of delivering most of your content. It allows for things to be self-paced. It allows for a lot of choice and voice for your students. Um, it's a great way to vary whole class or small group discussions because you can leverage a lot of different learning styles and tools and also think about equity and inclusion with the type of tools that you use asynchronously. Um, text, video, audio, um, visual. We saw a great presentation a couple weeks ago in which an art teacher was using Padlet to create walls and galleries for their students in order for them to visually connect with one another. Um, you can use tools, of course, like Flipgrid, which use visual and audio, of course, but it just allows for more variety in how students submit their work to you. Um, and also, of course, we're used to giving a lot of assessments and feedback asynchronously, and obviously this system works just as well as synchronous for that. So I think about this in terms of these multiple spider verses, right? We can accomplish the same learning goal in our own dimensions, in our own time, without needing to be together in order to do that. Um, so this is sort of a summary of um, some of the best practices that you'll find people talk about around these two concepts. Um, does anyone have any questions about just the concept synchronous asynchronous or anything I've discussed so far? Feel free to pop them in the chat window if you do. Great, and I'm sure Megan, you'll pop in and let me know if someone has a burning question. Um, while I'm presenting, I don't always see something pop up in the chat, so she'll help me there, alert me to that. Um, so here's an example of how I might go about revising an assignment with time in mind. So this comes from a class I teach for Global Online Academy. I taught this spring um, called Prisons and the Criminal Law. And um, I inherited this class um, from um, previous people who had done great work teaching it. And this one assignment I felt was really kind of based off of a brick and mortar notion of doing an assignment. So here's the assignment itself. So um, I really liked the concept of this. The idea was to find a news story about a guilty plea and um, look at how it was negotiated between the prosecution and the criminal defendant and um, then the student would then go on to analyze what the charges were, what the plea deal was, and what you think the motivations of the prosecutor and the defendant were. Really great, gets them thinking, but this is very much like a, what you would do in a class period kind of assignment. Um, have them look something up, maybe write 200 words about it, analyzing it, and hand it in to you. So it wasn't really leveraging the way uh, the assignment goals the way we could when we're doing something online. So I had a couple thoughts as I was thinking about revising this assignment. First of all, I was thinking about um, what would change if I made this synchronous, um, it's already asynchronous, but I shifted it and kept it asynchronous, what would be my reasons for doing so? I should be able to justify why I'm delivering the content in one way and not another. Um, I also wanted to al allow for more voice and choice and I also wanted more student interaction and community building. So how could I make this not just you hand it into the teacher, but something the whole class participates in. So um, this was me just brainstorming a synchronous option. What would that look like? Um, it might mean instead of spending student time finding cases, I might have a menu already there for kids um, and ask the group to pick one. Um, read through ahead of time, uh, make sure they understand the charges and the consequences and the penalties for this particular uh, crime in the area, and think about the negotiated charges. So some prep would go into it before they were asked to set an agenda um, and meet together via perhaps Zoom. Um, so the goal, I'd give them just a few brief notes, check each other's notes, make sure that they all understood and agreed on the basic facts, of the crime, of what the law in that particular state or area said about it. Um, can they agree on the basics and work all that out? And then finally, have the group work together to compose a statement about what they believe the defense and the prosecution were thinking. And um, a lot of times what I'll do when there's a Zoom meeting that I don't necessarily have to attend is I'll have students 
um, submit screenshots at the top of the hour and then at the end of their meeting with their clock visible. And students have fun with it. They wear funny hats, they wave, they do silly things, but it's a way to hold them accountable that doesn't take a lot of time um, from them. So this synchronous option would build community. They're helping each other. They're building understanding. They're fostering discussion skills. And they're also supporting independent learning skills. They have to prep for the meeting. They have to be ready to uh, be held accountable to know the information by their classmates. They have to set a time together where they'll meet. Um, so it kind of puts a little bit more onus on them um, to do some of these executive function skills. Um, asynchronous option that I thought of, I thought of a couple. Um, first was give them some sort of role. You're a journalist and you're covering this uh, case and you're expected to provide some analysis perhaps of uh, this case. What were the motivations for the defense and prosecution to take this plea? And so maybe creating a video or a news report, writing up an article where they'd analyze the case and then share that publicly with the class, maybe on a discussion board. Um, another option for an asynchronous assignment might be then doing partnering up, one being the defense attorney, one being um, the prosecution, and being interviewed by the media about why they believe they got the best deal um, when it came to taking this plea. So once again, it's perspective taking, but it's also a little more fun and collaborative, building connection, which is so important um, when you're trying to break through that online barrier with kids. So the assignment's already asynchronous, but with this option, now we have interaction, we have voice, we have choice, we're leveraging different types of technology. Um, there's more critical thinking involved as students take on roles. And once again, that community aspect that's so important to keep kids engaged um, when they're online. Um, did we have a couple questions in the chat, uh, Megan? I see some things. <laughs> a couple of us chatting back and forth about your way of using um, synchronous here is interesting to, uh, well, it was interesting to me and um, I got a, uh, an agree uh, that I had been using synchronous to mean time spent between students and teacher during class. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. And I just, I thought it was an interesting use of it. Um, let me just confirm. Oh. Terrence, yes. you might want to read Terrence. You can read it as fast as I can. The last one. Oh. Sorry, my screen moved on me. No, it's okay. Um, Terrence says, I've heard no class time versus homework time, just the work we're doing as, mm -hmm. as ways of describing class. Um, yeah. But I found that I fit the synchronous, asynchronous difference into the class homework division. Mm -hmm. What am I missing by still thinking in class homework paradigm? Hmm. Well, I think it depends. If, if, your class, if your homeschool is expecting you to meet a certain amount of hours or a certain time specifically with your class in order to deliver the content, in other words, you still have a schedule, then it would make sense, I think, to still think pretty concretely in, in those divisions because I think your school schedule is warranting it, that there's a certain amount of time, contact time, say, on Zoom with your class that you're expected to have. Um, and synchronous, it, it can mean teacher to student, but it can also mean student to student because just like in our brick and mortar classrooms, most of the learning isn't happening just as the teacher is, is leading or delivering it. It's also happening among the students. Um, so I think I'm used to think of it, thinking of it in, in both of those terms. Part of it being in that, um, especially with some online learning models, the teacher isn't necessarily expected to meet at a certain time on certain days with the kids. So I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. Thank you for that pause. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted us to take uh, a little bit of time now that we've kind of seen an example and thank you all for pointing out that like the concept of synchronous doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. Um, that's of course good to point out and good for me to know. Um, what's an synchronous assignment that maybe you would think about flipping to asynchronous and what would your reasons for that be? And um, what's an asynchronous assignment that maybe you'd like to flip to synchronous? And by synchronous there, you can think in terms of you being present or just dependent on people being together at a certain time and place um, in order to get the work done. Um, so uh, you might take a few minutes to pull up something in your Google Drive or um, pull up an old assignment or maybe just stop, reflect on something that you enjoy teaching and would like to refresh. Um, before we do our breakout rooms, let's take some time to pull out that information and kind of think about it. Um, so we'll be ready to talk with each other. Uh, Megan, anything we'd add before we do the little five minute think brainstorm?
Uh, no, not at this time. Okay, great. All right. So um, please take some time to pull up any old work you'd like to sift through um, to brainstorm. We'll take about five minutes. I want to make sure that we have enough time to really talk with one another in a breakout room. So we're going to take just maybe one more minute. We're going to cut it short just a little bit um, with the reflection part. All right, guys, I hope you have time to find something to chat about. We're going to move into breakout rooms. So you should have um, the sort of reflection assignment with you as you move into them. I'll see you in the future. Kim, we've got 43 people back in the room. That's about, uh, I don't have a good answer to how many people are still in. <laughs> I looked in a not helpful place. There oh, were that's 48 most of total, so you probably have one more room to go. Thank you, thank you. Yes, this is close to everybody. Great. Okay, folks. So um, 
as we wait for our last couple of folks to return from their breakout rooms, I have left a link to the slides in the chat window. Um, and I encourage you, uh, they're yours to reference now or later. I see several of y'all took me up on the now. Um, we're back. I'm going to turn it back over to Kim. Thank you. Hey, um, I hope you all had some really rich conversations in your breakout rooms discussing some assignments you might be tinkering with. Um, I love all of uh, the info going back and forth in the chat um, as people kind of discuss what synchronous means to them, the logistics of all of this. This is the type of work I think that's really helpful for us to be doing right now as we're kind of staring down fall <laughs> in the next few months. Um, I wanted to talk really briefly about a couple other considerations when we decide which types of content to deliver and how. Um, the first being, of course, diversity, equity, and inclusion online. It's part of everything that we do as teachers and thinking about learning needs of our students as we incorporate synchronous or asynchronous learning is really important. Um, Asynchronous can sometimes mean in some fields heavy on reading. We take a lot of content and that maybe we'd go over together in class and stick it up on a dock for kids to read. Um, and then there's the question of how many students do you have that have learning plans um, that have slower processing speeds with reading um, that might benefit from having verbal instruction sometimes to add variety to that. How might heavy on reading relate to and uh, translate into more time heavy for the student um, who maybe struggles with that type of content delivery. Um, I had a colleague who had this really great idea to do this conversation via Google Doc. Um, so we had kind of this little time limit and some questions and the kids really got into it typing furiously back and forth to each other um, for like two minutes for um, for like two hours back and forth they could pop in and out and have this conversation. Um, but in that process um, of having this interesting way that engaged the kids, um, didn't think about one of the students who has a slower processing speed in reading. And so great innovative idea students loved the lesson, but it didn't work for that kid, right? So thinking about these things. Um, video chats, certain types of processing speeds, people who have um, different sort of hearing or hard of hearing issues, how can we support them? Because online learning can be very uh, video heavy. And I know for myself, the, the sort of technology that will um, in real time or almost real time um, tell you what the person is saying, mm, those can be a little bit unreliable and sketchy for those kids. How do we um, provide equity for them? So this is something to be thinking about based on the makeup of your own classes. Um, and then, oh, Let's go back one. And then the other thing to think about is protecting your own time as a teacher. And I think this is so important, especially with what happened with our emergency learning um, this spring, and that we didn't really have time to plan out things. Now, all of a sudden, students can intervene with questions any time of the day or night over multiple platforms. And tracing all of that and keeping up with all of that can be overwhelming. Um, and um, one of the things I think GOA really promotes and that I'm trying to do with my own brick and mortar, formerly brick and mortar students, is um, fostering that skill of independent learning online and knowing that shift may be uncomfortable for them and it might provoke them to ask more questions. A question in class with a raised hand takes a couple seconds to answer. Emails from everyone who would raise their hand in class takes forever to respond to, as I'm sure we all found out. So um, making sure you have just one channel for communication, that students are known, this is the way you get in touch with me, just consolidates things for you. Having space where kids can ask questions to each other, whether it's a twist channel, um, Slack channel, if you use that, even if space on a homepage, I just used a Google Doc since my school didn't have a learning management system and had a box with questions. So all the things kids would raise their hands and ask just went in that box. I checked in that document daily to update our activities and answered them there. So it wasn't an email and the whole class benefited from knowing the question and answer. So little workarounds like that encourage students to learn from each other rather than having five emails over the same question. And then just thinking about um, responding sometimes with links that tell kids where to find the information rather than uh, going through the process of uh, writing it all out. And I know a lot of us do that anyway, but 
it's hard. We're giving people and we want students to have all the information possible. Um, but sometimes in, in technology, that can add up to a lot of teacher time um, that's stressful and weighs on us. Megan, anything in the chat um, you think we should address? A couple of us were chatting about also um, lack of internet access, in particular mm -hmm. high bandwidth, but also just internet access in general is a reality in some of our schools. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know we're all working with different populations of students and um, our schools are moving to online learning with the assumption that they're going to have access, <laughs> internet access, and that's incredibly uh, difficult, I know, for a lot of kids. It's a huge issue with equity, for sure. Um, something to keep in mind, too, about how can we navigate this new world online, um, for sure. Um, what I'd like for us to do is just take a, two, a few minutes to get back into our breakout groups and talk about teacher time and equity. Um, what are some considerations you might have thinking about these two things in this assignment you're thinking about revising? Um, Megan, are we ready to do just another short breakout here for them to circle back on this? We are. Uh, it's 8.54 Eastern time. What time are we bringing them back? Um, can we take maybe four minutes? Perfect. Four minutes. We'll see you on a few to chat about the questions on the screen. Can you quickly redefine DEI? Diversity, uh, diversity equity, equity, and inclusion. inclusion. Gotcha. Jinx. <laughs> Hey, thanks everyone. Welcome back. I know that was just a brief time to kind of think about it, but hopefully you got some ideas out there um, to continue thinking about how to reframe some assignments. Um, you have the link to this in your chat. Feel free to open it up and, and save it. Um, I have some resources at the end of the page in my email if you want to follow up with any questions. Um, the article about why time feels so weird in 2020 is a lot of fun. It has a lot of different like time mind tricks you can try out yourself. Um, and your students might like doing them too. Um, so thank you everyone and I'm happy to hang out and answer any questions that come up in the chat or anyone who wants to talk a little bit more about online learning. Um, I'd be happy to do that, but thank you for your time tonight and thank you for letting me share um, with you all. Thank you so much, Kim. I wanna encourage everyone, if you could go down at the bottom of your screen and find the reactions button, can we all give Kim a round of applause, Zoom style? There we go. It's a little more silent than usual, but there you go. Uh, Kim, we thank you so, so much for sharing your expertise with us tonight. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording and say good night to everybody who needs to get going. But again, we'll be around for a little while to answer some questions or just say hey. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>